Hello everybody and welcome back. In this third video in this complimentary series on business development, I'm going to talk you through the seven vital skill sets for business development success. Skill number one is planning. We often say is that a failure to plan is planning to fail. And therefore, in order to be successful in business development, it's a good idea to start thinking about how are you going to make the most of your time? Because 1800 hours is all you've got per year to make it. So if you've got quotas, if you've got big goals, if you've got a BHAG that you're reaching out for, or you're just looking to reach the stars, guess what? You cannot just sign a kind of clock in and expect for great things to happen without having proper prior planning. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance and of course also allows you to become successful. So skill set number one is who is the type of people that you really want to serve? What is your avatar? If there's one, two, three different avatars that you want to serve, well, who are they? What characteristics do they share? How do they have pressing pain points in common that you can address with your products, services, and subscriptions? It's all about putting the, the smarts into our time. It's not just about managing time. You first have to think about how you're going to optimize the use of your time for maximum payout, maximum benefit, so to speak. Skill set number two, prospecting. One of my all-time mentors used to say that prospecting is spending more time with better people. And it's obviously not about the relationships we have with people because all people are great people, especially the people that we appreciate and like spending time with. Now in a business context, there's certain people where it just pays off more to spend time with whether it is from a referral source perspective or a center of influence, or it is clients that not just be one, a client once off, but actually can keep repeating the cycle with you and keep buying your products and services all the time. We say that lifetime customer value trumps one transaction. And therefore, who are you going to spend your time with? You're going to spend your time over the phone, you're going to be spending time with people face to face in terms of conversations or coffee chats. You're going to also spend more time to actually present your value proposition. You will be doing that through networking functions. You know, we obviously cannot just wait for things to happen. We need to get out and do stuff. We all know that it takes a certain amount of touch points to sign up a great client. Now, typically in business to business environments, we know that it's easily five to seven touch points. And so how can you plan your time for optimum gain so that you spend more time with the right people and of course also eliminate all the nitty gritty, easy to do stuff in the back end that very often we can automate. The more we put automation in place for the tedious jobs and tasks that allow us to free ourselves up for more important matters, the easier it is for us to maximize profit and therefore prospecting is once again your ability to free up time there so that you have more time over there facing new potential buyers. In skill set number three we're looking at first impressions. We all know that it takes seconds for people to create either a favorable or a negative first impression of us as business people. So the question is not whether or not it will happen and whether or not it's fair, it just happens by default. We cannot undo people's ways of looking at things. So therefore, it's vital for us to know how to read people and then relate to them in appropriate ways, in emotionally intelligent ways. And the only way to do that is by using some sort of methodology. I personally use DISC. Using that methodology, to read people's styles, pick up on the valuable clues that I get from those people, and then prepare myself for my meetings with them in a way that will make them feel comfortable, that will help them open up in a way that will build rapport and deepen a relationship faster than anything else, scientifically speaking. And therefore, first impressions is a vital skill set that some of you guys might have already come across in my communication mastery training program. That is really what we're teaching. But it's all about first impressions. Rather than keep treating people the way that we personally want to be treated, which is really a common misconception. We all got taught to think that way and we already know that the numbers don't stack up. 
if we keep treating people the way that we personally want to be treated, we are doing ourselves, first of all, a disservice, but most importantly, we are doing our customers or potential clients a disservice. Why? Because we know that there's different people that have different communication styles. And whether you are a D, an I, an S or a C, predominantly speaking, your customers might have a different style to yours. Or in some cases, even worse, have the same and you might clash. And therefore, you don't want to somehow leave it to the last second to try to read people and then somehow wing it in the moment. That is too precious of a time. You have spent too much money and marketing dollars to get the opportunity in the first place to qualify this person, to be able to have a conversation with this person and therefore you want to optimize the odds in your favor so that you can be of service to these people. What difference does it make if you have the best product, the best service, the best team behind you if you cannot even make it past the first impression? If you already blow it there and then, the complete opportunity evaporates. And that is not what we're up for. So we want to use science, we want to use psychology, we want to use proven systems and methodologies to help you read people's style, relate to them in appropriate ways, because you have learned to switch gears and to treat people the way that they want to be treated. That is a golden nugget. With that, your strike rate increases from two and a half out of 10 to maybe five to maybe even six, seven, eight and nine out of 10. It certainly has been the journey that I have been on. And once again, if ever you want to visit that skill set, which is one of the most important skill sets that I have come across so far, it is first impressions, then check out my program Communication Mastery. Now let's go to skill set number four, qualifying. Qualifying is one of those other skill sets that I personally really appreciate. Now people sometimes ask me, Bram, what did you learn in your seven years at university studying psychology and graduating with a master's degree in it? And I tell you, there's very little that I still remember, very little that I would say I got a lot of value from. But in business, I can tell you that I have probably learned better than anyone else on the planet how to ask pressing probing questions at the right time, stagger them up in line and listen intently with a laser focus. I can pick up on things that very few other people would pick up in, in, as, in as little as 10 to 20 minutes of a meeting. And that is the skill set of qualifying. It is the ability to position yourself as a doctor of business, almost using the stethoscope where your diagnostic tool is your questions. You asked the questions and listen to the heartbeat. You listen to the pulse of the organization, the client, the problems that they're facing, the ambitions that they have down in the future, and you seek your way through it, through the labyrinth, to be able to come up with a diagnosis that actually is precise to the core. And that again is qualifying. I would love for you guys to also really start thinking about what is a good method for each of your avatars with the kind of questions that are a mixture of open-ended questions, especially in the early piece, with a few probing questions that are closed-ended questions and know how to kind of work them through together one after one so that you go from general and easy to answer through to more specific, targeted and intriguing for a client's perspective and also helping them to narrow things down. If you are able to help clients articulate problems and make them see the reality differently to what they saw before, thanks to the questions that you ask them, well, that in itself will help you to make sales later on because it's first helping people see things differently, help them to become intrigued and fascinated with your approach. Actually, them also being grateful for the revelations that they had along the way all of that is planting the right seeds for the next few skill sets. In skill set number five, we are talking about demonstrating. Demonstrating is once again one of those other vital skill sets that I would say that most salespeople automatically are better equipped with. Why? Because they've learned to somehow 
impress people, to charm them, to show something of value. And so it's one of those skill sets that great salespeople kind of naturally have adopted and refined over time. However, there's still a method, a scientific method and approach that you can weave in into your approach, whereby you're using proven tactics to demonstrate your value proposition. For example, also weaving in three different options at different price points so that your clients can actually choose and in their minds have already met one key characteristic, which is to have at least three quotes before they make a decision. So if you are happen to be the one to come up with three different options with different budgets, and you can justify and explain why all three op uh, options are great options for them, then it's really you helping them to find one of those three that really appeals to them and have them tell you back why they like it. That, in just a few nutshells here, is a few ideas on how demonstration becomes a skill set that is geared towards conversion. Now, it's not just about impressing people, charming them, you know, wowing them and all of that. It's also about helping them to make a decision. And so, once again, there is signs and methods behind good success and demonstration is a skill set that incorporates it all. In my various business for development programs, for example, Business Development Academy, I teach, for example, exactly how those steps accrue and what to ensure to do along the way to create buy-in. It's not about making a sale or selling it to people. It's about helping people on their end find what it is they want, then help them to explain it why they love it as much, and really help them to spell it all out, getting all cards on the table, so that they really start seeing in their own mind, oh my God, this is really it. As long as you create the buy-in that way, the sale or the business is guaranteed. We're now at skill set number six. Six is the skill set of influencing. Now, influencing is one of those more subtle ways of persuasion and influencing. Why? Because very a lot of people, once they have presented their proposition and they've quoted their solution and they showcased what they could do for the client, they kind of walk out sometimes empty-handed and they expect the client to get back to them. Imagine now that we are trying to be of service to people and we expect them to come back to us without us actually taking the time necessary to show, hey, I wanna be of service to you. I understand that you might have questions that right now I could answer for you. So why don't I get back in touch with you and see what it is exactly that I can help you with. How I can eliminate some of the doubt and question marks that you might have how I can address some of your fear points and make sure that you see that we actually can address them well and make sure that you see also that this is the right fit for you. This is really us taking on the mindset of being of service and doing the extra mile. There is no traffic jams on the extra mile and too few people in business development actually go that way. They just kind of sit back and relax and think that the thing is already sold. And obviously, 80% of business is lost due to a lack of follow through. So it's not just about following up once or twice, it's about following through till the end. Because ultimately, we wanna help people to make a decision and find what it is they want and obviously take it on as they see fit. Whatever serves their interests best, whatever they have identified that is right for them, you wanna help them to find it and commit to it. So the influencing role is really almost like a dance. It's about you taking on the arm of your potential client and keeping them close to you, keep in touch through various ways like email or phone calls or invitations where you bring them over to a certain event where you might have an open day or you might do a special VIP event and just say thank you very much, cocktail parties, whatever it is, it is you keeping people close. Keep whispering in their ears because only when you are holding them close to you can you predict their next step from there and possibly influence for the better. And so if you are too far off, try to somehow predict what the next move is going to be in a dance. If you are not close enough, you won't be able to tell because you will be missing out of vital clues. So take people close, 
Learn how to influence as a professional. Learn different ways, subtle ways that create buy-in rather than keep doing it in a hard-pressed way that makes you feel bad and definitely won't be appreciated by the client either. It doesn't have to be the hard, sleazy salesmanship. It can be the professional trusted advisors influencing and that is a world of difference. Last but not least, lucky number seven, closing. Now I'm mindful that closing is a bit of an old school term. Why? Well, it's kind of always about close it. And really, what we're doing is opening. We're opening things really to a new opportunity, a new relationship, a new client to serve, and possibly access all the other doors behind those people. So not only can we do business once, we're really opening everything and we're starting to deliver there. And this is obviously where we are starting to live up to the very promises we made, the guarantees that we've given people, and the value that we spoke about that we now wanna put in practice. Because words are idle, it's the action and the application that makes a difference. And so now we're opening that all up. We're looking to open up more business with the same clients because once they're wowed and they like it and love it, then obviously there's a need for more of it, which means customer lifetime value will exponentially grow with that one very client alone by doing the right thing. And there's obviously lots of other people in the network behind these clients that they also can refer into, that they can get you in touch with, and also where you can potentially open up business there. So therefore, your customer lifetime value across all these multiple people, it is all about your ability to start with closing. All the others were just a lead up. Here is where the handshake happens, where people say, let's do this together. We trust you, we like you, and we wanna do this. You've been very professional and you're advised as well, and now it's about you to live up to that. Closing, there's lots of great ways to go about it. Have people warm up towards your offer, have them build rapport, have them spell out what concerns they have about it, and you then addressing them together with them. And so as you are finding agreements, as you are satisfying them with your approach, then the business is being written. Two thumbs up for you, well done. And of course, once again, now the real journey starts all together. This is obviously now the whole seven vital skills of business development success that I've walked you through very briefly. There is a lot more to be said about it. Like for example, with closing alone, I teach 16 different ways on how to do closing in my book, for example, and in prog programs like Business Development Academy. Now, once again, there's not a lot of time left for this here, but if you do like this video, please, by all means, give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Also, turn on the little bell so that you have notifications every time when I upload new content like this that may be of value to you. Of course, also, if you have any questions or comments, please write them below. I love to hear from you how you like this video and what you've taken out of it. Thank you for watching. My name is Ram. I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Bye for now.